I was thinking about justice and mercy, I was reflecting on Micah 6, 8, which is a pretty common scripture verse when we start talking about things like justice and mercy. And it says, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Um, oftentimes the scripture verse can be summarized on t-shirts and bumper stickers as do justice, love mercy, walk humbly. Um, and I think that is such a powerful summary of that, of that scripture verse. Um, and I particularly love how that, uh, that phrase do justice, um, talking about justice as a verb, talking about justice as an action, as a response. Um, I, I just think that summarizes that concept pretty well. Um, justice is responding to wrongdoing, not only responding to it, but making it right um, and seeking peace um, and things like that. So that's, that's kind of my initial broad stroke overview of, of what is justice. Um, and then we think about love mercy, that next phrase of that, that bumper, bumper sticker explanation of that verse. Um, thinking of loving mercy, I think that hung, hangs me up a lot. Um, mercy requires withholding punishment. Um, whereas grace is oftentimes giving something to someone that they don't deserve, just like salvation. <laughs> salvation is, is the ultimate act of grace from Christ. We were given something that we don't deserve. Um, whereas mercy is withholding something that we do. And obviously the cross is is another amazing example of mercy as well. Um, but thinking about this love of mercy, um, that requires patience. It requires swallowing pride. <laughs> it requires um, loving your neighbor more than you love being right, or more than you love giving punishment, or more than you love um, responding to something that you've experienced um, and things like that. And that can be hard to do. That can be hard to take a step back and choose to love mercy and love your neighbor more than you love punishing somebody for something that they've done. Um, and then we kind of move on to this walk humbly piece, walking humbly with your God. Um, and that piece has, has always um, reminded me of one of our uh, kind of go-to biblical characters that I think uh, we talk about a lot, even as little kids, um, Noah. Um, and I might be particularly thinking about Noah lately more often than maybe I do some other times because my, my church is going through, um, going through Genesis. <laughs> so we have just finished talking about Noah, just finished covering the flood narrative. And I'm sure you guys know the story, but just kind of a summary. Um, in Genesis chapter 6, we read that God observed human wickedness, and he examined their thoughts and their hearts and saw that everything about them was wicked. Everything about them was seeking evil, seeking wrongdoing. Um, and so the Lord, Lord's heart broke. The Lord grieved that he had ever made humanity, and he wanted to make it right. He wanted to respond to to all of these wrongdoings. And so he chose to um, flood the earth and start over, wipe out humanity and rebuild. Um, and that was not done without considering Noah and his family, because Noah is described in, in chapter six as a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth. Um, and he's described as somebody who walked closely with God. Um, and that's always struck me, Noah being this person that walked closely with God, not talked closely with God, not listened closely with God, walked closely with God. It implies this quiet companionship, this, this kind of knowing, this understanding, this patient, um, patient friendship, patient companionship, um, walking together through life, learning um, from one another and things like that. And I just, I just always find that a beautiful image. Um, and so anyway, so we see, we see God, we see God being angry with humanity and, and wanting to try again, wanting to, to rework things. And so God chooses Noah and his family as the people to bring about this new humanity. So he talks to Noah, says, you got to build a big boat. <laughs> the rain is coming. The floodwaters are, are filling the earth. Um, and you and your family need to be safe and, and you need to bring a lot of animals with you. 
obviously I'm moving quickly and generalizing this story because um, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but if you're not, you can find it in Genesis chapter 6, 7, and 8 primarily. Um, so the floodwaters come, the animals are safe, Noah's family is safe, and eventually Noah sends out some birds, checks to see, you know, if if the if the waters have receded, if there's any land that they can they can get to, and long story short, the flood riders recede. No one his family are able to come out. All of the animals come out, um, and life starts over. Life begins again, and there are rainbows presents present as as that promise that this is a new beginning. I'm starting over, um, and and we're gonna figure this out together. And I promise never to destroy the world like this again. So, you know the story. Um, but I reflect on that story, especially within the context of what, what's discussed in Micah 6.8, this concept of doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly. Um, I think in the story of Noah, justice is the flood. Um, justice is this response to wrongdoing, and God's response is sending the rain, sending the flood, um, seeking peace by wiping out destruction. Um, which is, which is always kind of interesting, like, you know, destroying destruction (laughs) is kind of an interesting concept. Um, but I think that reflects sometimes the difficulty of, of doing justice. It can be a difficult thing to do. It can be difficult to say, this is not right. And I'm not going to be a part of it. And not only am I not going to be a part of it, but I'm going to respond to it and I'm going to change it. Um, Mercy, within the context of of Noah's story, I think is the ark. Um, It's uh, God saying, I'm going to withhold my punishment, my destruction of of the world around you, from you. I'm going to protect your family. I'm going to protect the animals. Um, So build an ark and find safety within it. Um, God extended mercy to Noah and his family. And, by extension, us, because we were able to continue in in humanity, in this beautiful love story between us and God, because God showed mercy to Noah. But I think the the most pivotal part um, is this walk humbly. Noah walked humbly with God. Um, And I think that's the key to discerning our role in spreading justice and mercy, is walking humbly with God. That is the, the, the peace. You won't know what justice looks like in your life and in your community. You won't understand how to extend mercy to others if you are not hearing the still small voice of God walking beside you in that quiet, trusting, patient, beautiful companionship that that God is inviting you to. So I invite you to do, do justice, love mercy, and more importantly, walk humbly with God so you know what that even means. Um... So I threw a lot at you. Um, I, I hope that's kind of a, I don't know, a helpful um, place to start if you are feeling overwhelmed by your peace in this justice and mercy story. Um, maybe it starts with walking with God, not talking, not being an active, you know, uh, argumentative, you know, kind of confrontational person with God, but just walking, walk beside God see what God says, see how God directs your life, and see how God includes you in his plan for justice and mercy for this world. Mm